What happened for me personally when I was a, a, a teen, between the age of 13 to 17, I got into enormous amount of trouble with the law. I did uh, a lot of unethical things and I was getting myself in so much trouble. And I had one mentor uh, that my brother introduced me to. His name was Alan Brown. He was a very successful philanthropist, entrepreneur. And he agreed to meet with me for lunch one day. And he asked me, like, why are you doing these things? You seem like a nice young kid. And I said, I don't know. I just want to make some money and I just want to fit in. He goes, but you seem like you're intelligent. Why don't you just use your brain's natural abilities? I go, well, listen, based on my education and based on what the teachers have told me, uh, I'm not going to do very well in life. And I left high school in grade 11 thinking that I'm not worthy enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough. And this one man in one minute, in one meeting, changed my life. Because he asked me, what, what goals do you have? And I said, what, what do you mean, what goals do I have? I said, I want to go out this weekend to the bar. I want to have some good food. I want to find a nice young lady to maybe hook up with. And he says, no, no, but what are your bigger goals? And I didn't have any. So he actually sent me home. And he said, fill out these pieces of paper. And on the piece of paper, it said, like, what age do you want to retire by? Like, I was 19. This was May of 1980. I wasn't even started yet. They said, but just fill out, fill out these papers. So I said, I want to retire by the time I'm 45, $3 million. I want to have a Mercedes. I want to have a house. I want to travel the world. I want to have a great lifestyle. And so I came back on Monday, and he looked at it, and he asked me one question, and that question transformed my life. And he said, are you interested in achieving these goals, or are you committed? And I stopped, and I, and I looked at him. He was standing up. I was sitting at my desk there at his office. And I asked him, Mr. Brown, I said, what's the difference? And he said, if you're interested, you'll do what's convenient. You'll come up with stories and excuses and reasons why you can't, and you'll use your education as an excuse. You'll use your stories as an excuse. You'll use the fact your father was a cab driver and was a gambler and never had any money. You'll use all of that as your reasons why you can't. He says, but if you're committed, you will do whatever it takes. You'll let go of your stories. You'll let go of your excuses. You'll let go of all the reasons you currently have that are formulating your identity of yourself. And you'll learn how to let that go and become who you are destined to become. Right? So he said, everybody sets goals. Either they write them down or they don't. They have them in their head. I'm going to teach you how to achieve goals. It's really interesting coming from the guy that was in The Secret. And I love what you've talked about, the difference between the law of attraction and the law of Goya. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what? talk to us about that. So the law of Goya is, is simply get off your ass. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you think and you believe and you emotionalize and you visualize uh, and you create your plan for how am I actually going to achieve this, so what do I need to do, when am I going to do it, how specifically, how am I going to uh, tweak it, measure it, and iterate it so that I'm consistently making progress? I learned the value of progress versus perfection. None of my mentors ever had me focus on perfection. They had me focus on progress to just keep getting better. Little incremental gains every day, every week, every month, every quarter. And even when you move backwards a couple of steps, what's the progress that you made in what you learned? So I was taught that failure is an opportunity to learn. And I was also taught to disassociate me being a failure from failing. For sure. Right? I want to go back to what you're talking about with beliefs. Yeah. And you said, this is so cool, you were talking about how you wrote down these beliefs and you were reading them over and you were doing what you're told, you're running your finger across it, you're really allowing yourself to feel it, imagine it and your brain was screaming something at you. My brain was screaming, that's bullshit. <laughs> that's not true. You're not successful. You're not earning that amount of money. You're not smart. You're not this. But I was also taught at the same time that when that happens, first and foremost, that's normal. That's the old self and the old patterns trying to fight for their life. And he said, with repetition and emotion and consistency, initially it's hard. And you have to use conscious effort to create the new beliefs. He says, but over 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 180 days, that new pattern that you're focusing on and paying attention to, your brain basically says, 
well, I guess you really don't need those old patterns. You keep activating these new ones. Let's just make these ones work and let's make these real. 